We're going to continue on with the interviews now. A Plan 10 Pictures is here in Las Vegas and they're premiering their movie, The After Dark. It's a horror film representing a lot of stunts, a lot of makeup, FX makeup, blood horror. As you can see, this red carpet is technically a blood carpet, so it's going to be a little different, but it's so much fun. And we're here at Brendan Theaters at the Palms Casino Hotel. And what was the turning point for you? So you have built a career in communication, you've built a career in marketing, you have your own businesses as an entrepreneur. What was a turning point where you sat there and you said, no, I want to run for public office? I know your family has so much to do with that, having children and seeing, you know, what um, you could do and possibly affect their future. Um, but what really was that moment where you're like, no, I'm going to run? And this is and probably what's the biggest misconception about the being a male revue dancer? I know people are always, you know, talking about it. They have their presumptions. And then um, the people in your personal life, like your family, is there anything that you really have to say, you know, to prove to them that this is completely different from what public uh, might see? Yeah. Tell us a little bit about what you're most excited for people to see about this movie. Is this a movie that you've been working on for a very long time, one of your really big dreams to really premiere this movie? And what does that feel like to have a premiere right now? You have all of this going on, mm -hmm. right? You have your hands and everything. At the moment, do you have a kind of viewpoint into where you want each of those... I guess, labels to go? Do you keep them separate or do you all want them to be one and kind of, if, if that makes you sense? You got music going, mm -hmm. you got directing going, mm -hmm. you're also working on other sets, right? You got your production company, yeah. so now you're directing. Are those all combined that you want to have one day or do you want to stand there and be like, you can hire me to do it all? Or you're you doing, you know, music on a, one film is just another side thing or do you want to just kind of encompass it all one day. Since I've never actually met someone who's talked about being a journalist and all those things, is there a big difference? Would you say, you know, doing shows like this, um, obviously there's similarities. What would you say makes a great comic in your eyes as a comedian yourself? Like what really makes a great comic? And you actually had a show at the Smith Center. It was called It's a Man's World, but that was the most recent one. I believe in 2022, one factor that's kept you being persistent this whole time. You mentioned a little bit how Las Vegas didn't open the doors that you thought it would mm -hmm. in the path you thought it would take you. But what really keeps you going to continue to produce shows, to continue performing, to continue writing music? What would that be? Do you kind of work with enforcement when it comes to victims, like hands-on? Do you have people reach out to you that are part of cases or higher-ups yeah. kind of within enforcement? I first, one of many things, you are a public speaker in the simplicity of wellness. Is that yes, correct? I do. I think your book basically would sum up the bottom line yeah. of nutrition for any person, no matter what Everybody. you're going through. And, and, you're and, healthy, yeah. you're not, or you've gone through accident, but like, you, no matter who it is, because I yeah. think, you know, reading a little bit about it, it's just basic knowing your body, but then also never taking things away, starving <laughs> yourself or depleting. And it's about basically how to live a healthy lifestyle and maintain it. Yeah. Right. And have did you study nutrition? Do you have any? Yeah. Right. Have you had any writing experience prior to doing stand up? I noticed I watched some of your stuff online and doing my research, and I know you have roasted a lot of um, you know people that are coming to watch the show. How do you know where to draw that line? Um, being roasting for fun for comedy because obviously like there's a crowd of people and you're singling someone out. And how do you know what that line is? How did you as an actor? Because this comes up a lot as well. And you're so immersed in a character, I know a lot of method actors have this issue, come down from the high of playing this role for a month, two months, and involving the pre-filming <sighs> preparation. How would you shake that up? This is appropriate to ask. And <laughs> but like I know in my knowledge, my research of Bollywood and what I know is that it's a very toxic industry. All entertainment is toxic, even in the U.S. So we're, none of us are you know, innocent from that. But... How do you make it a safe space that you can give them and say, I'm not going to put you in a place that you're going to make you uncomfortable? What Especially a wonderful, as wonderful women. question. And so, what was your first big job post grad that you were like, oh my gosh, big like this, job. this is it? Kind of new to Vegas, mm -hmm. and you know, you're starting this residency. What mark are you trying to leave in the performance industry here? I feel like films and movies have become sort of therapy for you. Absolutely. And it goes into your training and how vigorous you take it because it's an escape. Mm -hmm. If you can be someone else, so you don't have to live with the memories of maybe things you don't want to deal with. 
whether or not you're past those things. But you know, everyone has their own way of going through those things. And Absolutely. to you is to be the best actor you can be and kind of just derive from looking at different points of life. Yes. Right, you leave it up to the host. I mean, you sit there, you got enough to do. Mm-hmm. But the host might know what they're going to talk about beforehand, know who their guests are, but it's up to mm-hmm. them to decide. Mm-hmm. I never pre-write, so everything that you're seeing is in the in moment the, yes. and what I'm <laughs> saying. So mm-hmm. I think it can literally showcase who can do it and who do can't. Again. So my next question for you is you've been through the ringer with shows, hosts, business partners, you know, all of the like. What have you learned about what makes a good host on camera? Pablo, you've done many different avenues of police work. Yeah. How do you think that that shaped you living your life during that and after? Was there a time in your life growing up, because you started when you were 20, yeah. that you just start to look at things completely differently? Like, yeah. Where are you looking to end up? What kind of legacy are you trying to leave behind for yourself? Is there one particular film that you, either past or present, that really stuck out to you, that you just like, oh my God, that wardrobe was just... <laughs> you know, America, I think, after the past couple presidencies, has become really aggressive in terms of politics. You know, we see a lot of people being a lot very vocal in terms of their views, maybe even more unhinged and mm-hmm. transparent when I use that word. How do you feel about the division that is in America right now? Do you think it's, uh, you know, going in the right direction, wrong direction? And how do you want to heal, I think, have a part in healing America to come together again? Have the differences, but also come together. That's that really drove you. I know you mentioned your daughter, sure. right? But you did say how your bro- it was your brother's idea. Did he have some experience in seeing people in real time? I know you've been first responders, so you see people get in you know, any situation that great. you would know. That's a great question.